from one of the most exciting strikers in the sport to resorting to lay and pray is kind of crazy. Corey Sanhagen, or should I say Corey Sanhagamadov, defeated Rob Font through a wrestling clinic pretty much. Now he did have a reason as to why his fight was boring. He said he got injured in the first round. He had a tricep tear and the fans did not like this fight at all. The audience was booing for like four rounds straight. They were even chanting for the ref to stand it up. Even Michael Bisping, credit to Michael Bisping for his commentating. Michael Bisping was even saying, okay man, this fight is not that exciting to watch. Dominic Cruz is being a bit of a contrarian. It was so funny listening to him try to argue with Bisping that the fight was not that boring. And I 100% agree with everything Bisping was saying. 100% a technical wrestling domination from Corey Sandhagen, but it's just not that fun to watch. And I saw all the fans online as well. Everybody saying, man, people were saying they slept during the second round and woke up in the fifth and felt like nothing changed. But we have to give Corey Sandhagen some credit. His wrestling has greatly improved, even from his last fight against Cheeto. But this is prize fighting, man. You got to make it somewhat entertaining. You can't just go out there, sit on top of someone in half guard and expect people to be happy about it. You know, you can win fights, become a champion, all that stuff. But if you fight this way, you're going to make sure nobody watches your fights. The whole fight card was great. Right, the whole fight card had great finishes, great performances throughout the whole thing. It's just the main event, Corey Sanhagen's fight, was definitely not as fun as the rest of the card. Off of this wrestling performance, it would be pretty easy for people to look at it and say, Oh look, Corey is ready for Aljamain Sterling. His wrestling looks so good. But they're actually looking at the wrong thing because his offensive wrestling looks much better. What happened when he got taken down? Because he did get taken down by Rob Font, which means that Aljamain still has the ability to take down Corey Sandhagen. Corey gave up his back. As soon as his back hit the ground, he turned over and gave his back. He tried to hand fight and stuff, but if that was his first instinct, once he got taken down, Eljamain's beating him again like that. So remember, his offensive wrestling and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu looked much better. His defensive, off of what we've seen, still looks concerning going up against Aljamain Sterling. So what essentially happened in the fight? Well, Corey Sandhagen attacked the single leg, pretty much only targeting that front leg of Rob Font for takedowns, and Font never defended a single one. Every single time Corey shot a takedown, he got it. And it came very, very easy too. There was like no resistance at all. It was like as soon as he touched Rob Font's leg, Font was on his back instantly. And it's crazy to see that Font never adjusted for five rounds. A similar kind of technique every single time from Corey Sandhagen came at him. And Font had no answers to it at all. So from that takedown, Corey immediately was getting into half guard. And he sat in half guard for a lot of it. The first round was a bit different. There was a lot more action there. More striking of the two. Rob Font landed a big shot of his own. Corey Sandhagen was constantly getting into the southpaw stance to throw a lateral moving left. He didn't want to stay on the center line because of Rob Font's jab, right? Font's jab is his best weapon. If Corey stays on the center line at that distance, it's always going to come at him. So he's moving laterally to get himself off the center line and darting in with left hands. Font adjusted to that, right? Font adjusted to the left hand, slipping on the outside of it and finding an uppercut up the center as Corey's moving into him, right? So it's going to magnify the damage. That's why it looked like Corey got stunned by the punch. So you saw some good stuff out of Rob Font on the feet, but not as much on the wrestling. He looked better on the ground than he did defending the takedown. And while on top, Corey didn't really do much. He could have ground upon it way more. He didn't need to transition as much because he was winning the fight, right? Why get out of a position where you're winning, right? So I understand that mentality, but he's not creating offense for the fans to enjoy that fight. So he was sitting in half guard, and I think another reason why he decided to sit there was because every single time he tried anything, Font was looking to sweep him. So he went the comfortable route of sitting on top of the guy all the way to a decision. Because if you look at the things that Rob Font was doing, he was constantly going for the butterfly hook. So with the butterfly hook, he's bringing his leg on the inside to elevate Corey Sanhagen. If Corey ever tried to do anything and opened up his base, Font would be able to extend his leg and elevate Corey, giving him openings to either stand up or reverse the position. This butterfly hook was constantly worked on by Rob Font, and it's almost acting like a trap, right? If Corey ever tried to move out of it, the trap would be that Font would sweep him. So Corey's answer to this was to play it safe and just sit on it. This also allowed Rob Font to do the other thing he was looking for. So he would elevate Corey with that butterfly hook. Look in this second round where he pushes Corey upward. And by doing that, he creates an opening for his left arm to slide through and hook under Corey's right leg. And he has a right underhook with his right arm as well. He connects his hands, completely trapping Corey on top of him. And he's doing this so he could try to teeter Corey around looking for a way to reverse the position. But notice Corey's two points of contact on the ground. He has 
the left hand post and the right foot on the ground, keeping him balanced, right? So it's almost like a bridge. He has two points at the end that's not allowing Font to completely rotate him one way or the other. And the way that Corey got out of this, he went to ground and pound. It's actually pretty ironic. As soon as he starts throwing punches, he gets Font to react but he just didn't do it that much. The times he did, it fixed things for him, but for most of the time, he just sat on top. So look, when he started punching Font, it relieved that right underhook. Font went to address the ground and pound, he let go of his underhook, and he tried to grab onto Corey's wrist. He's trying to stop Corey from punching him, and now Corey posts with that left arm of his, pushes himself to his own right side, so he's like teetering himself to the right, putting weight on his right leg. At first, he was only on the right foot. Only the right foot was touching the ground. But now because he pushed himself that way, his entire shin, knee, and foot are touching the ground now. He got himself in a base on top of Font. Font recognizes this and lets go of that left hook under Corey's leg. That allowed Corey to step through, bringing his knee first inward so he can just do what he did for the rest of the fight again. That's essentially what happened for four rounds. I mean, without fail, you see the same exact position in every single round. The same exact exact one. Corey Sandhagen on top in half guard, Raw Font attacking one side with the butterfly hook, Corey getting himself as close to Font as possible. The fact that Font never adjusted to this at all is crazy. And not only that, what about in the fifth round? So Font is clearly, obviously losing this fight. He's down four rounds and his corner is telling him, what's going on, man? We have to go out there. We got to win this, knock this guy out. And honestly speaking, no sugarcoating, Rafan had one of the lowest fight IQ moments I've ever seen. He's going into the last round of a fight he's losing because of wrestling. He's getting taken down, out-wrestled, out-positioned. He has to come out in the fifth to knock this guy out. That's the only way he wins. And what does Font do 24 seconds into the round? He shoots a double leg takedown. Wasting 46 seconds trying to complete the takedown only to get reversed and taken down himself. That was so crazy, man. There was something interesting from Rob Font, though, in the first, where he was on his back, Corey's looking to stack on top, putting pressure on Rob Font's legs to make his way in. So instead of just addressing the front line here, look how he has his right hand grabbing onto Corey's left heel, and he has his right foot blocking Corey's left side of his hip. This is ultimately keeping Corey in that position, right? Corey doesn't know what Rob Font was going to look for. So Font, with his left foot, he kicks out Corey's back leg. You see this sometimes used by Charles Oliveira to take away the opponent's balance and look for some kind of advancing position or trying to stand up. In Ralph Font's case, he's looking to stand up. So when he kicked out the leg, look how Corey now lands on his knee. He's not above Ralph Font like he was, giving Font space to stand up, but he can't do it yet. The reason why, Corey has a hold on Font's left ankle. So what Font does to relieve that, he simply punches him in the face. Isn't it crazy how... All of these positions are getting taken away from each other by ground and pound, damage, strikes. It just did not happen that much. I'm sure in the times that it did happen and it worked, but for 90% of the fight, strikes on the ground were just not used that much. And we look at how all the takedowns happened for Corey Sanhagen, a lot of them were countering Font's jab. So he'll wait for the tell, usually Font throws in a step in jab, so when Corey sees that Font is stepping in at a necessary distance that he could connect with his jab, that's when Corey's going to shoot under for the single leg. He did this multiple times throughout the fight. So ultimately, a dominant performance for Corey Sanhagen. Not that exciting if we're going to be honest here. And this is probably not the last time we see Corey Sanhagamadov. Because if Aljamain goes up to featherweight and Corey fights Sean O'Malley, why wouldn't he go to this again? If he thought Rob Font was a scary striker, Sean O'Malley is a different beast. So I hope you guys enjoyed the breakdown. And if you did, make sure to give this a thumbs up. If you enjoyed my content, make sure to subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video.